When we look up at the sky after a storm and see a rainbow, we tend to focus on the beauty of the colors and God's artwork painted in the sky. But in ancient times, when people saw a rainbow, their focus was directed on the bow itself, the ark. It was kind of like a bow and arrow. They believed that rainstorms were the results of various gods having a fight, each taking up their bow and shooting arrows of lightning at one another. In the story of Noah, we learned about a terrible storm that went on for 40 days and 40 nights, flooding the earth. This storm came in response to the wickedness of humanity. Earlier in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, we read that God regretted that he had made man. Their wickedness was so great that he sent the flood. Today's first reading from chapter 9 of the book of Genesis picks up after the flood. In a sense, we could say God hangs up his bow in the clouds, like putting a nail in the wall and hanging up a picture. The bow hanging in the clouds becomes a symbol of God's covenant, a covenant God enters into with Noah and his descendants, a com covenant promising never to destroy humanity again. God does not give up on us, and we must not give up on God, ourselves, or one another. The image of covenant is like a red thread that is woven throughout sacred scripture. A covenant is very different than a contract. A contract says, you do this, 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 I'll do this, this, this. If I fail to do point 2B of the contract, we can just rip it up. I didn't fulfill my part of the deal. But a covenant is very different. A covenant is unconditional. There are no conditions within a covenant. We totally give ourselves to God in a covenant of love as God totally gives himself to us, so much so that great love for us that he gave us his son who died upon the cross to free us from sin and death. God's covenant remains firm and strong no matter what we encounter in life. It is we who fall away from the covenant, but God doesn't want us to be stuck in the sins of the past. He gives us a future full of hope in the sacrament of reconciliation. In our second reading today, St. Peter draws upon the story of Noah, connecting the water of the great flood with the waters of baptism, in which we are freed from original sin and we become children of God. In the waters of baptism, we enter into a covenant of love with God that is eternal, a covenant that is stronger than death itself. In baptism, God enters into a covenant of love with us, promising always to be with us, no matter what. In today's gospel, Jesus was driven into the desert by the Spirit for 40 days, a foreshadowing of the desert experience we share during this season of Lent, a 40-day journey that we are on. In the desert of Lent, we are challenged to confront the wild beasts in our lives, those things that seek to destroy us, to take us away from the covenant we have made with God and God with us. The wild beasts that live among us are many. Pride, materialism, pornography, hate, lying, gossip, fear, worry, addictions, revenge, despair, self-hate, so many wild beasts that are attacking us, trying to get us away from the embrace 
of God's love. None of us desires to be put to the test, and yet it is something that all of us will experience, just as Jesus was driven out into the desert. Through the ancient practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we strip away all that is unnecessary, and we come to realize anew our dependence on God. In the desert, we become aware of the ways we have failed to live God's covenant of love. One of the words in sacred scripture for sin is the Greek word hamarsia. Hamarsia. The translation of this word means to miss the mark. So if you've ever played darts before, you have the bullseye in the middle, and you try to hit that bullseye, often we miss the mark. That is one of the ways of looking at sin in our lives. We know what we're supposed to do, and we strive to do it, and yet often we miss the mark. Even at our best, we are not all God created us to be. We've all missed the mark. We all sin. Today, the words of Jesus come out loud and clear. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus is reminding us of God's covenant of love, of God's mercy and compassion. Through his precious blood, we are given an opportunity for new life to turn away from sin because God doesn't want us to be stuck in the sins of the past. He desires for us to have a future full of hope. In Scripture, when God enters into a covenant with his people, it reflects God's dream for unity. Covenants are about relationships, our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Jesus reveals the depth of God's covenant of love in the Last Supper meal. As he says, Father, may they be one as you are in me and I am in you. From one generation to the next, God is faithful to his covenant. Just as Jesus was never abandoned by the Father, so we too can trust that God will never abandon us that even in our sinfulness, God makes a way for us to come back to him. And through the prayer of absolution in the sacrament of reconciliation, we are given a new start. The sacrament of baptism reminds us that we are made in God's image and likeness. We are called to recognize God's presence all around us. We are free to live within God's covenant of law, his covenant of love, or we can fall prey to the wild beasts who seek to destroy us. Jesus is our protector. He is our guide. He is our shelter of strength. As we begin this season of Lent, brothers and sisters, how will you make use of of this 40-day retreat we are on. Maybe think about which of the wild beasts are nipping at your heels, trying to overtake your spiritual life. That long list that I shared, just choose one. It's too difficult to change everything in our life all at once, but we focus on one area and bring that to our daily prayer asking God to help us, to strengthen us, calling upon the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit in our need. As you do battle with that wild beast nipping at your heels, do you need wisdom or understanding, knowledge or right judgment, counsel? Do you need fortitude or courage, piety, Fear the Lord. These gifts of the Spirit are given to us to help us be strong in our side of the covenant, 
to walk in God's ways. Today, let us pray. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. God never gives up on us. We must not give up on God, on ourselves, or one another.